What is up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. These are my full card breakdown and predictions for UFC Vegas 65. We have Sergey Spivak going against Derek Lewis. And we are back for another full card breakdown and prediction video this week, breaking down UFC Vegas 65. We got a 13 fight card on our hands. Uh, a card where, you know, maybe not the most name value, but I think it's going to play out very exciting as uh, these Apex fight cards usually do. I think there's going to be a lot of violence, and I think there's some good opportunities to make money. So no complaints for me. Looking forward to it. We do have a week off next week, so definitely going to enjoy this. And then we have uh, three fight cards left to uh, to finish the year after the week off. So um, it's been a really good run. Had a monster night at UFC 281, probably one of the better nights of the year for me. Uh, went up 4.9 units tracked, but um, hit the Hail Mary parlay that I give out every week on my betting articles like over eight to one um so that was awesome just a, a great night for ufc 281 from a betting perspective from a fan perspective i thought that's potentially card of the year right there um so i know it's a little tough sometimes going from a, such a, a great pay-per-view like that to you know natalia silva teresa Pleda. but um as always looking forward to breaking down all these fights all the research has been put in and i can't wait to talk about them i do want to shout out the winner from last week uh, for the significant strike contest shout out to 23 OL, uh, 23, if you, if you can hit me up on Twitter or Instagram with your Cash App or your PayPal, I'll be uh, happy to give you your winnings there. But yeah, he did guess 178 significant strikes. He was the closest uh, by by far there. So shout out to you, 23. Hit me up on the socials. I'll get you your winnings, buddy. Um, other than that, I'll be going live Friday, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern time as always. Saturday, one hour prior to the prelims for best bet. I do believe we have an early start time as well, so I'll be up early for that. And uh, yeah, hit me up on uh, Twitter, DFS underscore numbers, Instagram, DFS by the numbers. I'm starting to do a ton of new content on Instagram, especially the video content on there. So if you're not following me on either of those, be sure to do so. And if you're not on the website, check it out. $10 a month for that betting tier, the most popular tier there. You get early access to my bets, um, you know, tons of articles, just a ton of content on there. It does help support me, and you do get a lot of stuff that you do not see on YouTube. So I say we get into it. Uh, like, subscribe, all the good stuff. Appreciate all the support week in and week out. And let us get into the card, guys. All right. First fight of the night. We have Natalia Silva going against Teresa Bleda. We have got Silva, 25 years old, 5'4", with a 65-inch reach. She is 13-5 and 5-0 and and in her last five fights. Bleda, she is only 20 years old. We got Sonic up here for some reason. Tapology, what are you doing to me? What, what are you doing to me? All right. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we got uh, Bleda, who is 20 years old, 5'9", with a 71-inch reach, 6-0, and 5-0 and and in her last five fights. So... Uh, we take a look at the odds here like we always do, and we see that uh, Silva opened up a plus 100 dog, uh, currently minus 163. Blada opened up minus 120, and she is currently plus 143. So the interesting thing with Natalia Silva was she had a, a pretty big layoff, and I would, I, would, I would go back and watch some of these fights of hers, and you know, to be honest, I wasn't too impressed, and um, pretty sure a lot of people weren't because she was a pretty big underdog against Jasmine Jazz DeVicious. I was actually at that card and she was a completely different fighter. Um, I mean, you go and watch some of her fights from, you know, two, three, you know, three, four years ago, and she's a completely different fighter. She showed up against Jasmine. Uh, her takedown defense looked phenomenal, like elite. Uh, she was very hard to take down, very good balance. She even got takedowns of her own against Jasmine Jazz DeVicious. And then it was her striking that was just phenomenal, her movement. Um, very impressed with Natalia Silva. And, you know, the thing with the, that big layoff that Silva had, like she was like 22, 23 at the time. Um, and then she took that, you know, two, three-year layoff, and she came back and at 25 years old just looking phenomenal. So very impressed with Natalia Silva. As far as Teresa Bleda, she did have a win on the Contender Series, solid decision win there. Um, but I don't know. She's super young. I think she's talented on the feet. She is going to be at a striking disadvantage. She's going to have to get this fight down to the mat, in my opinion. And, and at that point, I'm just not convinced she can really do that. I mean, Jasmine's a very good wrestler, and Jasmine wasn't able to get her down or really come close even. Um, so I'm not sure Blade is going to be able to get the fight down to the mat. She's super young, 20 years old, turning 21 soon. Um, I think Natalia Silva is going to be able to stuff the takedowns. I think she's going to be able to keep it on the feet. And, and on the feet, I, I do fail, favor Silva. I think Silva is a very, very good striker. So I'm going to take Silva to kick off the card. 
Um, but Blade is, an, uh, Blade is another girl that, you know, she's only 20 years old. We could be seeing these massive improvements, but I do really like what I see from Silva. So I'm going to take Silva to win. I'm going to take Silva to win by decision. All right, moving on, we have um, Fernie Garcia going against Brady Heastand. We got Brady Heastand, who is 23 years old, 5'8", with a 71-inch reach. He is 5-2, and 3-2 and and in his last five fights. Fernie Garcia, he is 30 years old, 5'7", uh, with a 67-inch reach, 10-2, and two, and 4-1 and one in his last five fights. Uh, we'll take a look at the odds. We have uh, Brady Heastand is the favorite, opening up minus 135, currently minus 156. Fernie Garcia opening up plus 105, currently plus 126. I went and watched a, a good amount of footage on Fernie Garcia. I wanted to see kind of how his how good his takedown defense is. I think it's going to be super important in this fight because all Brady does is, is go for takedowns. And I have a feeling Brady's going to go for a takedown in the first 10 seconds. And that's typically what he does. Um, Fernie's takedown defense is not great, to be honest. He does have a wrestling background. He will go for takedowns of his own right. Solid offensive wrestling, but defensive wrestling, it does look like it needs some work there. Um, so he can't be taken down very easily. The one thing I will say about Fernie Garcia is his getup game is very good. Um, it was not often where I saw somebody be able to, you know, take him down and then hold him down. So he's typically able to pop back up. He showed that a lot in his fight against Journey Newsom, who Newsom's a black belt in BJJ. And, you know, Newsom wasn't really able to control him. He's kind of just popping right back up. So that's good. But the takedown defense is a concern in this matchup. On the feed, it's, it's Fernie Garcia all day. Although I'm not extremely impressed with the striking of Fernie Garcia, but, you know, Brady Heastan just a walking, punching back on the feet, and, you know, Brady's still super young. He's only 23 years old. I think he's going to be making improvements. I think he has the much higher ceiling in this matchup between the two, but, you know, on the feet, it, it's it's Fernie Garcia um, by a mile, and that's okay. You know, Brady's not going to go out there and, and test his striking. He's going to go out there, and he's going to go for takedowns and go for as many takedowns as possible. Like, this is a fight where I could honestly see Brady completing like 10 plus takedown just due to the fact that Fernie's Garcia is his get up game is good but his takedown defense is not and it's one of those fights where I just see Brady you know grinding this one out I see him you know being stuck to Garcia like glue for for 15 minutes and you know Brady has the card to do that he's very young he could be making the improvements and um, I do like Brady to win this fight but if Garcia is able to stuff a lot of these takedowns which I don't really think so um, if he's able to keep this at range for a lot of this fight, which I don't really see it. I mean, it's going to be Fernie all day on the feet. It's just I really think that Brady's just going to be stuck to him the entire time. So I do like Brady. He's standing here to win. To be honest, not really impressed with either guy. But, you know, again, Brady's only 23 years old. I think he has a solid ceiling. I like his style. I like his wrestling. I like his pace, his cardio, his pressure. And I like that he fights to a good game plan. So I'm going to take Brady here to win. And I'm going to take Brady to win by decision. Okay, next we have um, Vanessa Demopoulos going against Maria Oliveira. We got Demopoulos, 34 years old, 5'2", with a 62-inch reach, 8-4, and 3-2 and and in her last five fights. Maria Oliveira, 25 years old, 5'6", with a 69-inch reach, 13-5, and 3-2 and and in her last five fights. We'll take a look at the odds. It's a straight pick here. Oliveira opened up the favorite, minus 150, currently minus 110. Vanessa Demopoulos opened up plus 130, currently Minus 110, and I agree with that. I think that's perfect. I think this absolutely should be a pick'em. We got a, a clear striker versus grappler matchup where, you know, Oliveira, not completely impressed with her, but, you know, she's young, and she looked good in her last fight. She looked good. She was the underdog in her last fight. She went out there and, and pulled off the, the decent-sized upset against Gloria DePaula, and she looked good. She went in there. It looked like she had a little bit of a, a chip on her shoulder. Um, striking looked good. She's She's very big. For the division, a very long 69-inch reach. She's going to have a 7-inch reach advantage and a 4-inch height advantage here. Um, the thing, I mean, it's striker versus grappler. Like, on the feet, it's Oliveira all day. Vanessa Demopoulos is a walking punching bag, and she's she's super tough, don't get me wrong. But, I mean, she eats punches with her face. 44% striking defense for Vanessa Demopoulos. Um, she's going to have to get this fight down to the mat. I mean, she's not outstriking Oliveira. And she's especially not outstriking Oliveira with a seven inch reach disadvantage. Like, that's not her game. Vanessa Demopoulos is a grappler and a very dangerous one at that. Uh, Oliveira, she can be taken down, she can be submitted. You know, we saw Tabitha Ricci, who Tabitha Ricci is a, a much better wrestler than Demopoulos. And we'll talk about Demopoulos' wrestling in a bit, but um, you know, she can be taken down, controlled, and on the mat. I don't think she's uh, the best. So, yeah, Vanessa's able to get this fight down to the mat. I think she could potentially get the submission. But if not, 
is going to be ugly, and Oliveira is going to make this look pretty easy on the feet. I, I don't think it's close. I think Oliveira is striking solid, and um, she's going to have a lot of uh, advantages in terms of the height and the reach as well. So uh, we're yet to see. Uh, the one thing with Demopolis where it's scary in terms of making a pick on her is the, the takedown accuracy. 7% takedown accuracy for Vanessa Demopolis. What I will say is she has been training out at Fight Ready, so I'm hoping she's made some improvements in the wrestling. And she did get a takedown in her last fight against Jin Yu Fry. Very well timed takedown. It was her only takedown. She was like one for seven on takedowns, but still she landed a takedown. And and literally, it, it can only take one takedown. One takedown, and the fight could be over here. Vanessa Demopolis' ground game is no joke, and I think she's going to have a big advantage. I think a pick'em's right. Uh, flip a coin. Um, the big question is, will Demopolis get the fight down to the mat at some point? I'm going to lean, yeah, she does, but I just don't have a ton of confidence in her. It's hard to have confidence in a fighter with a 7% takedown accuracy. But I'll say she does get the fight down to the mat, and when she does, I think it's her world. I think she gets the sub. So I'm going to take Vanessa Demopolis to win. I'll take her to win by second round submission. All right, next we have Ricky Tercios going against Kevin Natividad. We have Ricky Tercios, 29 years old, 5'9", with a 72-inch reach, 11-3, 3-2 in his last five fights. Kevin Natividad, 29 years old, 5'6", 70-inch reach, 9-3, and 3-2 and and in his last five fights. We will take a look at the odds, and we see that Ricky Tercios is the favorite. He opened up minus 185, currently minus 155. Kevin Natividad opened up plus 160. He is currently plus 135. Not a big fan of this fight, to be honest. Not a big fan of these two. Um... Ricky Tercios is an exciting fighter, but I'm not sure what the heck happened with the dude in his last fight. Um, he was a favorite against uh, Zahabi, and I just want to bring up some stats that happened in that fight. Um, and Ricky Tercios landed at a 11% accuracy, and that's not um, it's not a joke. I mean, 11% accuracy, Ricky Tercios. So he landed only 27 significant strikes out of 235 and I was watching the fight and I'm like I'm just like shocked um because we've never seen that out of Tercios like he's never looked that bad so that was a, a surprise to me because I go back and watch any other fight of Tercios and the dude's not not uh striking at 11% accuracy I mean I'm not sure what the heck happened in that fight but uh, Ricky definitely needs to bounce back, and I think it's a, a great bounce back spot for him against Kevin Natividad, who I just don't think is UFC caliber. Um, we talk about horrible striking accuracy. Kevin Natividad's striking accuracy is 24% as a whole, whereas Tercios, at least Tercios in the UFC um, Contender Series combined, it, it's 34. But yeah, it's Kevin Natividad, 24% striking accuracy, so low volume. You know, landing 2.63 significant strikes per minute, absorbing over four. Um, you know, Kevin Atividad, a guy that, you know, would go out there and mix in takedowns outside the UFC, hasn't really shown that yet thus far in the UFC. I don't know, I just don't, I'm not a big fan of, of Kevin Atividad, but I think the reason we're getting such a, a good line on Tercios is just due to the fact that he, he crapped the bed in his last fight, he looked like crap, and that performance is stuck in people's heads, and, and rightfully so. How can you get that awful performance out of your head? But as long as Ricky shows up and he doesn't do that again. I mean, this is a, such a winnable fight for him. I mean, on the feet, it's, it's Tercios all day just because he does a lot more. He's throwing a lot more volume. Um, Nativity, I, I don't know. Nativity, that has not impressed me, you know, inside the UFC or really out. I guess Nativity, that can mix in takedowns here or there, but, you know, Tercios, really good get-up game, great scrambling ability. I think it's Tercios and, honestly, Tercios all day, but how can you trust this guy? This guy's a nutcase. I mean, listen to this guy's interviews. Um, just terrifying stuff. Just a guy that you don't really want to put your money on. So, I'm not a big fan of this fight. But as far as a pick, I'll, I'll take Tercios. But you can't be confident in this guy. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Next, we got Miles Johns going against Vince Morales. We have Miles Johns, who is 28 years old, five foot seven, with a 68 inch reach, 12 and two, and three and two in his last five fights. Vince Morales, 32 years old, five foot seven. 68 inch reach, 11 and 6 and 2 and 3 in his last five fights. Let's take a look at those odds. We see that Miles Johns opened up a minus 160 favorite. He's currently minus 145. And then Vince Morales opened up a plus 140 dog. He is currently plus 125. Miles Johns is coming in here on, on short notice. 
which is definitely something to mention, but I kind of see why he's taking this fight. The reason being is I think Miles Johns has a couple paths to victory here. The first path to victory is going to be the leg kicks. I mean, it's something that Morales clearly struggles with, and I'm sure Miles Johns sees that. Uh, we saw uh, Vince Morales struggle with the leg kicks of Jonathan Martinez and then Chris Gutierrez uh, badly, which I, I believe uh, Gutierrez and Martinez are teammates, but um, Miles Johns has good leg kicks, kicks, kicks as well. Uh, Miles Johns went out there and... Uh, Really beat at the legs of Anderson Dos Santos. Dos Santos was kind of compromised in that first round. Really had nothing left after that first round. So I think that Miles Johns can just come in here and you know kick the legs of Vince Morales. I mean he has he has shown no ability to to fix that part of his game. Um, so there you go. there you go. That's a clear path to victory. The other clear path to victory for Miles Johns is going to be takedowns. Uh, Vince Morales cannot stuff a takedown. Um, a gust of wind can can knock this guy down. It's it's bad. Uh, he has a on paper it's like 43% takedown defense, just not good. Um, and Miles Johns had he has a, a wrestling background, very good wrestler, and he went to it a lot outside the UFC. I remember the uh, the Adrian Yanez fight where he won that fight against Adrian Yanez. He went for a, a lot of takedowns in that fight, and he got a lot of takedowns. Um, I think on the contender series as well, he got some takedowns. But you know his last I think three or four fights, the dude doesn't have any takedowns. But I would like to see him go back to that that wrestling here because on the feet. It could play out close at times, but I think the leg kick's going to be the difference there, and I think Miles Johns can mix and takedowns literally whenever he wants. Uh, Vince Morales can cannot stuff a takedown to save his life. So I do like Miles Johns here. The only concern would be um, the short notice aspect of things. The other concern would be uh, the potential game plan of Miles Johns. Maybe he doesn't come out here and wrestle. Um, but I think it's such a winnable fight for him as long as he fights with the right game plans here. So I think he has multiple paths. I like Miles Johns to kind of grind this one out and win a decision. Uh, so yeah, give me Miles Johns here. All right, we have Marina Moroz going against Jennifer Maya. This is an interesting card and an interesting fight. We got Marina Moroz, 31 years old, five foot seven with a 67 inch reach, 11 and three. And three and two in her last five fights. Jennifer Maya, 34 years old, five foot four, with a 64 inch reach, 19, 9, and 1, and two and three in her last five fights. We'll take a look at the odds. We have Marina Moroz, minus 150 opening up, currently minus 178. Jennifer Maya opened up uh, plus 130, currently plus 153. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, this is a fight where it's probably going to play out close, like most Jennifer Maya fights do. But, you know, the thing with Jennifer Maya, and it's always frustrated me you know, in pretty much her entire career, is she's a black belt in BJJ. You know, her, her base is that grappling, right? She's a phenomenal grappler. But she doesn't go to it, ever. And there's fights where people are like, yeah, Jennifer Maya is going to wrestle here. She's absolutely, she, she has to wrestle, right? And she doesn't, and she just strikes. Um, it'd be very wise for Maya to, to shoot takedowns here. Marina Moreau's atrocious takedown defense 47 percent it would be very wise for mine to shoot takedowns but that'd be a mistake counting on her to do that. it's just not something she does should she do it absolutely I'm not sure what's going on with with Maya and in the, in the in the game plan and the coaching but it's just not something she does she wants to go out there and strike and if she goes out there and strikes she's, she's going to lose this fight uh Marina Moroz I don't think she's the best striker in the world but she's very active on the feet throwing a ton of volume, only a 32% accuracy, but she's throwing a ton and landing a good amount, landing 4.04 significant strikes per minute. You know, Maya a little bit less than that, a little bit over three. But yeah, I think uh, Moroz is going to be able to out-volume Jennifer Maya. I also think that Moroz can potentially go for takedowns here. You know, would that be the, the smartest thing in the world? Honestly, it, it might be. It might be. Uh, Jennifer Maya's takedown defense isn't really good in her own right. You know, uh, Manon Fiora was able to mix in some takedowns. So, yeah, I, may, I think Moroz might be able to mix in some takedowns here. Moroz looked incredible in her last fight against Agapova. Um, you know, pushing Agapova against the cage, taking her down, and beating the crap out of her. So, yeah, if Moroz doesn't like how it's going on the feet, why can't Moroz go for takedowns? Because we know for sure that Maya's not going to, because Maya's IQ is just atrocious. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Moroz here. Um, I think it's a winnable fight for Jennifer Maya, but. I've said that so many times. Um, I can't count on her to to wrestle, and for that reason, I have to go with Marina Rose here, and I'll take her to win by decision. Okay, uh, Charles Johnson going against Zagas Zumagulov. We have Charles Johnson, 31 years old, five foot nine, with a 70 inch reach, 11 and three, and four and one in his last five fights. Zagas, he is 34 years old, five foot four, 66 inch reach, 14 and seven. 
and one and four in his last five fights. We have Charles Johnson opening up a minus 175 favorite, currently minus 155. Zonga Sumagulov opening up plus 150, currently plus 135. And yeah, Charles Johnson kind of got fed to the Wolves a little bit in his uh, debut against Mohamed Makayev. Just terrible matchup for him. He was a big dog and much more winnable matchup here for, for one Charles Johnson. Uh, Zalgas is going to potentially try to come in here with somewhat of the same game plan. I mean, Zalgas does have a you know better striking than a guy like Makayev, who's just still very green in terms of that striking. Uh, but yeah, Zalgas, I think he's going to be at a big striking disadvantage here in this fight. Charles Johnson, very good striker. He's going to have a five-inch reach advantage, um, a four-inch reach advantage, but a five-inch height advantage there. So on the feet, is it's Johnson for me all day. But yeah, Zalgas is going to try to mix in the takedowns. But Zalgas thus far in the UFC, his, his takedown accuracy is only 18%. And Johnson's takedown defense is phenomenal. I know he got taken down a lot in his debut against Makaya, but that's Muhammad Makaya. I think his wrestling, his grappling is just on another level of a guy like, you know, Zalgas Sumagulov, who is, you know, 34 years old at this point. He's 1-4 in his last five fights. I just feel like Charles Johnson is going to be able to stuff the takedowns here for the most part keep this at range and just beat Zalgas on the feet. The one thing I will say is a lot of these Zalgas fights are, are super close. A lot of these fights are going to split decision. Um, there was that, that debut, I think it was against Holly and Piva, where um, I actually thought he won that fight. Uh, that was a close fight. Uh, there's some other close fights. I mean, the last fight with Jeff Molina, I thought, I thought Zalgas probably even won that fight. Um, so he's going to these close fights. He's making competitive. He's striking solid. He does throw big. Big shots, and he will go for take. So this could be a close fight, but I do like Johnson. I think he's going to stuff the takedowns, keep it on at range, and and win the striking exchanges here for the most part. So give me Charles Johnson to win. Give me Charles Johnson to win by decision. All right, uh, kicking off the main card here, we got Jack Della Maddalena going against Danny Roberts. Uh, cannot wait for this fight. I think it's one of the more exciting fights on the entire card. Uh, we got Jack Della Maddalena, 26 years old, five foot eleven. With a 73-inch reach, 12 and 2 and 5 and 0 in his last five fights. Danny Roberts, 35 years old, 6 foot 1 with a 74-inch reach, 18 and 6 and 2 and 3 in his last five fights. Let's take a look at the odds here. Uh, Jack De La Maddalena opening at minus 335, currently minus 430. Jack is the biggest favorite on the card. Danny Roberts, the biggest dog on the card, opening up plus 275, currently plus 330. So. I think it's a terrible matchup for one Danny Roberts. And I see what the UFC is doing here, you know, trying to build up Jack. And honestly, when I saw this fight was booked, I was kind of surprised because um, Jack had a very good win in his last fight against Ramazan Amiv. And I thought he would go and, and take that one next step up. But hey, maybe they're giving him just one more, one more uh, highlight real knockout before he does take that step up. I mean, this is a terrible matchup for Danny Roberts. Danny Roberts, not only is he 35 years old at this point, but he's taken a ton of damage throughout his career. He's been knocked out a ton throughout his career. Um, in the last fight against Francisco Trinado, 43-year-old Francisco Trinado was a, a horrible, horrible look. Um, I mean, this guy was was doing the chicken dance the entire fight, and I'm actually shocked he survived, my goodness, but, you know, Francisco Trinado was, was hurting this guy with everything that was landing, and as we know, Trinado's not, like, the biggest hitter in the world, and he was just destroying, you know, Danny Roberts on the feet. Like, I think Danny Roberts' chin is a liability, his striking defense is a liability. His striking defense is 51%, and you're putting him against a, a striker in the caliber of Jack Della Maddalena, a guy with phenomenal striking, phenomenal hand speed, power, and you're putting him against Danny Roberts, who, for one, can't take a shot. Terrible striking. D I mean, it's a rough matchup, and I, I see why Jack is the biggest favorite on the card here. Um, is Danny Roberts going to try to take down Jack Della Maddalena, I think so, but Danny Roberts, only a 18%, no, 11%, only 11% takedown accuracy, only two takedowns completed in the UFC, I, I think Danny Roberts is in trouble here, um, you know, he was able to survive in his last fight against Francisco Trinaldo, I don't think Jack is going to let him off the hook here, and there was a point in that Trinaldo fight where Trinaldo could have finished him, but he went for a takedown, um, I think Jack finishes him here, and I think it's probably early as well. I just don't see Danny Roberts being able to take these shots. I think it's a really good matchup for Jack Della Maddalena. I think he wins by first round knockout, and I cannot wait for him to take another step up in competition very soon. Okay, next we have Cody Brundage going against Rodolfo Vieira. We have Rodolfo Vieira 
who is 33 years old, uh, six foot with a 73 inch reach. He has eight and two and three and two in his last five fights. Cody Brundage, he is 28 years old. He is six foot with a 72 inch reach. He is eight and two and three and two in his last five fights. We'll take a look at the odds here. Uh, Vieira is a favorite, which is it's always terrifying betting on this guy and his fights in general. We'll kind of talk about why, but he's he's a favorite opening at minus 145, currently minus 180. Uh, Cody Brundage opening up plus 125. He's currently plus 155. This is probably one of the harder fights on the card to call for me because I can just see this fight playing out so many different ways. And I think it really comes out to, honestly, the game plan of both guys. I'm curious to see how, how both guys approach this fight because for Cody Brundage, if I was Brundage, I would be looking to you know put a pace on Rodolfo Vieira. I thought that you know Chris Curtis really let Rodolfo off the hook a little bit. Um, just kind of being content to just outstrike the guy at range. It was actually closer than I thought it would be at range, and Rodolfo was actually able to survive against Curtis. And then the Stoltzfus fight, where same thing, Stoltzfus did not really push a pace. If I'm going against Vieira, I would like to see somebody you know push a pace like Fluffy did. You know, make Vieira work. And Chris Curtis didn't really make him work much, and Stoltzfus definitely didn't make him work much. But Cody Brunage, I have a feeling, is going to go in here and make this guy work. I think he is going to push a very hectic pace, and that's kind of what Cody Brundage does. I mean, all his fights are very, very fast pace, and I kind of expect the same thing here. I think Cody Brundage is going to have to walk through a little bit of fire here to win this fight. Um, there were some things I did not like to see from the Cody Brundage side, and the first thing is his takedown defense. I don't think he has the best takedown defense. We saw Nick Maxima being able to take him down, control him. Maxima got into some dominant positions at, at one point, or a couple points in that fight, and... Yeah, that can happen here. I mean, you do not want to have Rodolfo Vieira take your back. I mean, the fight would be over shortly after. Rodolfo Vieira is, is grappling is, is next level, but it's only next level for about five minutes, um, especially if you're making him grapple. You're making him work. You're making him go for takedowns. Um, it's a fast pace. I mean, he has about five minutes of gas, but if you kind of stay at range, you know, um, slow down the fight, yeah, you can go 15 minutes, and we, we saw that. So um, I do think Cody Brunge is going to come out here and make this a very fast-paced fight, and like I said, he's going to have to try to survive some very, very tough positions early. Can he do it? I don't know. I mean, I think uh, I think Rodolfo is going to be a very good chance to finish this fight early. In terms of a pick, I think I'm going to take Rodolfo to get the first-round submission. I think he will be able to take down Cody Brundage at will early on. And I think he's going to have opportunities. So I'll take Vieira to win by first round sub. But we've seen it before. And uh, if this fight does get extended, it's, it's going to be Brundage. But he's going to have to just walk through fire in, in this first round. Um, so I'm going to take Vieira to win. I'm going to take him to win by first round submission. But if this fight does get extended, it heavily favors Cody Brundage. But that is a, a big F because Verdolf Vieira extremely dangerous. Um, they call him the black belt hunter for a reason. 100% finish rate for Vieira, and I, I will say he does get that first round submission, but uh should be a fun fight, but a fight that you just can't really have a ton of confidence in. Uh, just Vieira fights in general, they're just so tough to call. Okay, moving on, we got Muslim Salikov going against Andre Fialo. We got Salikov, 38 years old, 5'11", with a 69 and a half inch reach, 18 and 3. And 4-1 and one in his last five fights. Andre Fialo, 28 years old, 6 foot with a 74-inch reach, 16-5, and five, and 3-2 and two in his last five fights. Uh, very closely lined fight here. We have uh, Andre Fialo opening up uh, plus 105, currently minus 105. Muslim Salikov opening up minus 125, currently minus 115. It's so about to pick him. Slight shade to uh, the Fialo side. Looks like money is coming in on Fialo as we speak. But I don't know. Um... This is a tough fight to call. I, I, I'm one of the biggest Muslim Salikov haters out there. Like, I always pick against this guy. In last fight, it finally paid off. I'm just not a big fan of the guy. I think his, his cardio is questionable. I, I hate his volume, his output. The guy barely throws anything. I'm um, just not a big fan of, of Muslim Salikov. I thought he's always had a, a hole in his grappling, and just nobody's been able to exploit that yet. But this is a matchup where I'm actually kind of leaning Salikov here just because Andre Fialo, I don't know. I mean, this guy... Fialo, he has a ton of power, that's that's for sure, but outside of that, his striking defense is, is atrocious. Uh, the guy is content to walk forward and just eat punches with his face. Um, like, he's getting outstruck bad in, in pretty much all of his fights. I mean, he's landing 3.78, he's absorbing 6.65, that's a negative 
significant strike differential, which is the worst on the card by by a mile. Uh, Fialo only a 48% strike in defense. So not only is Fialo's strike in defense just completely horrible, but his chin's bad as well. Like Fialo's chin is is very questionable. He has been knocked out a few times in his career, but it was the Van Camp fight where Van Camp rocked him uh, early in that first round. And then it was also the the fight against Jake Matthews, where Jake Matthews, as we know, the guy's a typically a decisionator, right? Um, he's typically not finishing anybody, and he was hurting Fialo, not just the knockout, but multiple times throughout the fight. So you have a guy in Fialo who blocks punches with his face, and I, I really do question the chin of Fialo as well. And in terms of the striking, he has a lot of power, but that's about it. I mean, his cardio's not good. I mean, this guy, his mouth's open in the first round. So although I am the biggest Muslim Salikov hater out there, I, I think I got to pick him here just because Salikov's not going to throw a lot and he's not going to land a lot. But when he does land, he lands extremely hard and it's just hard to see Fialo eating one of those shots, eating one of those kicks, eating one of those those punches. Um, so I'm going to take Salikov to win by knockout here. I think somebody's getting knocked out in this fight, but I like the uh, the strike and defense of Salikov, 66% strike and defense compared to Fialo's 48%. And I think Salikov's more durable. I know he got knocked out in his last fight against the Leech. We know the Leech hits like a truck, and that was the first time that Salikov had ever been knocked out. So um, give me Salikov for the win. I'll take him to win by, I'll say, second round knockout. Oh boy. Um, we have Waldo, Cortez, Acosta, Going against Chase Sherman. We got Acosta, 31 years old, 6 foot 4, with a 78 inch reach, 8 0, and 5 0 in his last five fights. Chase Sherman, 33 years old, 6 foot 4, 78 inch reach, 16 and 10, and 1 and 4 in his last five fights. Um, Acosta is the favorite, opening up minus 160, currently minus 170. Sherman opening up minus or plus 140, currently plus 145. Yeah, this is a, I don't know. Um, it's a close fight. I mean, flip a coin on this one, and the odds don't indicate that. That should be a coin flip. It's a, it's a coin flip. Uh, just not impressed with, obviously, either guy, especially Chase Sherman. But um, I'm going to pick him here. I think it's a close fight. I think it probably could even go to decision. was not impressed with the cost in his debut against uh, Jared Vandera, honestly. I mean, Jared Vandera had a lot of success. Jared Vandera made that fight really close, landed a lot of leg kicks, and you know, Chase Sherman does have some leg kicks. That he throw, he throw, actually throws a lot of leg kicks. Went back and watched some of his fights and very active with the leg kicks. And honestly, I'm kind of shocked Acosta's coming back this early because his legs were really beat up in that fight. And that was a week ago? A couple cards ago? Like, that's kind of shocking to me. Um, yeah, I'm going Sherman here. Uh, I think the leg kicks could be a factor here. But just in general, like... Um, Van Dera was having a lot of success, and we saw Sherman go out there and knock out Jared Van Dera. It's a close fight, though. I mean, Acosta, he's going to probably have the speed advantage. He's probably more defensively sound just because anybody's more defensively sound than Chase Sherman, who is a walking punching bag. But you know, Sherman's fought the better competition. He's more experienced. And I'll take Sherman to get a greasy heavyweight decision here. But no confidence in this fight. No confidence in the pick. No confidence in anything in this. I mean, this is a, a terrible fight. I, I, it's on the main card as well, which is interesting. But, yeah, this, this is awful. Um, give me Chase Sherman for the upset, but who who the heck knows? I mean, this is terrible. Give me Chase Sherman, though. Decision. Okay, uh, moving on to the co-main event. We have Kennedy and Zichuku going against Ayan Kudalaba. We got Zichuku, 30 years old, six foot five with an 83-inch reach, 10-3, and 3-2 and three and two in his last five fights. We got Ayan Kudalaba, 28 years old, six foot one. With a 75 inch reach, 16 and 8 and 1, and 1 and 3 and 1 in his last five fights. We have Kennedy Enzatruco, who is the favorite. And he opened up as a minus 110 pick. I'm currently minus 170. Ayn Kudalama opened up minus 110, and he's currently plus 145. Yeah, those odds scare the crap out of me. They scare the absolute crap out of me. The reason why is you don't want to bet Kennedy as a, as a favorite. You don't want to bet this guy as a favorite. I believe he's 0, for, 0 and 2 as a favorite. But as an underdog, I think he's like 4 and 1 in the UFC, and the reason you don't want to bet this guy as a favor is because his path to victory is getting his ass beat for seven and a half minutes, and then coming back and, and winning the fight, his path to victory is just getting beat, beat up bad, until his opponent's gassed out from, from beating him up, I mean, his path to victory is, uh, you know, the Homer Simpson approach, do you want to bet this guy as a favorite, I mean, I, I wouldn't, um, 
I guess the last fight was an anomaly. He went out there and, and took down Carl Roberson. Good on him. But as we know, Carl Roberson, no takedown defense, no ground game. So, you know, it was great to see that. But he's going to have to walk through fire in this matchup against Ayan Kudalaba. Like, um, he's able to kind of, you know, weather these early storms against some other guys. He's going to weather an early storm against Kudalaba. I mean, if, if Kennedy starts slow against Kudalaba, he's going to get knocked out in the first round. Um, yeah, I know people think, you know, Kudalaba sucks, and maybe he sucks a little bit, but, I mean, he's, he's getting finished by guys like Johnny Walker, very dangerous guy, Ryan Spann, very dangerous guy, you know, Magomed Ankalaev twice. I mean, he's, he's getting finished by very dangerous guys. Um, and he puts up a big fire, you know, early on. He has a lot of big moments early on. He's getting caught in submissions. He's getting knocked out by Ankalaev, but I don't know. I think it's a pretty big step down in competition for Kudalaba here, and he should go out here and win this fight. And I'm kind of surprised he's a dog. I mean, if you like Kennedy, I mean, maybe maybe live bet him because I'm almost I can almost guarantee he's going to lose the first round. And one thing I noticed it was you know Kennedy's takedown defense on paper is very good, but and then you kind of look at, at who's taking him down, and you know guys like Paul Craig, who as we know Paul Craig is is wrestling just abysmal especially early in his career it's gotten a tad better but still it's, it's horrible and Paul Craig went out there and was able to complete I think it was one takedown he was one for like 16 so six percent take on that I mean that's and then Danilo Marquez who's atrocious uh was two for 12 so yes he's stuffing takedowns but uh, against who Nega Mariano was one for five, so yes, he's stuffing these takedowns, and his takedown defense looks good, but against, you know, Nikolai Nega Mariano, against Danilo Marquez, against Paul Craig, you know, this is going to be the, the best wrestler he's fought by, by a mile, like Kudalaba's completing takedowns at a 63% accuracy, so I can very well see a scenario where Kudalaba does take down Kennedy and just overwhelms him on the mat, uh, Kudalaba's ground and pound is, is vicious, very vicious, and, you know, Kennedy is going to take a beating in this fight for sure. It's just, is he going to be able to survive that first round? If he survives that first round, Kudalaba slows down, and, then, and Kennedy's going to do his thing. He's going he's gonna to take over like he does. But that is going to be a, a tough, tough ask for him to, to, to survive those first five minutes with Ion. So I'm going to take the upset with Ion. I'm going to say he does go out there, overwhelm Kennedy, who starts slow. And I'm going to say Kennedy's Homer Simpson approach does not work this time out. I'm going to say Kudalaba finishes him in the first round via ground and pound. Okay, uh, moving on, we have Derek Lewis going against Sergey Spivak here, the main event. We got Sergey Spivak, uh, 27 years old, 6'3", with a 78-inch reach, 15-3, and and 4-1 and in his last five fights. Derek Lewis, 37 years old, 6'3", 79-inch reach, 26-10, and 2-3 and and in his last five fights. We'll take a look at the odds here. Uh, Sergey Spivak is the favorite, opening up minus 105, currently minus 200. Derek Lewis opening up minus 115, currently plus 170. Yeah, um, I don't bet on Derek Lewis fights in terms of the money line. I mean, these these fights are nearly impossible to predict because I see why Spivak's the favorite. He should be. Um, he has the clear path to victory. Uh, take down Derek Lewis, who doesn't have a good takedown defense. And just beat him up until Derek Lewis quits. But it's not that simple. Um, you know, there's been times where I'm like, there's no way Derek Lewis is winning this fight. There's no way Derek Lewis is beating Curtis Blades. I mean, it's such a great matchup for Curtis Blades. And then uh Derek Lewis flatlines him. You know, Derek Lewis was a dog against against a uh, hype train and, and Chris Dawkus. And Dawkus went out there and, and got knocked out. Um now he's a, a dog here against a guy that is starting to gain some hype in Sergey Spivak. And, you know, we've seen Spivak knocked out by Walt Harris in the first round. We've seen Spivak knocked out by Tom Aspinall in the first round. Um, you just can't count out Derek Lewis against anybody. So although I think it's such a winnable matchup for Sergey Spivak, you can't have any confidence in it because Derek Lewis has that that one X factor. And that one X factor is, is the power, the unreal power. Some of the best, if not the best power at the heavyweight division. So... I'm going to pick Sergey Spivak to win. I think he is going to get takedowns. I think he is going to close distance. But he's going to have to be very careful here. He's not going to want to strike with Lewis at any point in time. He's going to be very careful closing the distance, not getting caught with something on the way in. Um, this is a terrifying matchup. I would not be betting on, on Sergey Spivak, especially at minus 200, just because Derek Lewis, it only takes one. But yeah, Sergey Spivak is wrestling's phenomenal. 
His ground, he's very active with the ground and pound. He has good cardio for the heavyweight division. Um, so yeah, I, I love Sergey here, but anyway, how much how much confidence can you have against Derek Derek Lewis? You just don't want to. You typically don't want to bet against Derek Lewis. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna pick Spivak to win. I'm gonna say he, he wins via ground and pound in the second round. But uh, I don't know. Derek Lewis always always gets me. Uh, I the, the Blades fight was the last straw for me. I was so confident in Curtis Blades. I thought it was a, a terrible match for Derek Lewis. And um, Lewis starched him. So maybe that happens here. But I'm going to take Spivak to win. I'm going to say Spivak knocks out Derek Lewis. Ground and pound. Second round. Puts it on him. Overwhelms him on the mat. And uh, gets him out of there. So we did it, guys. 13 fights. Yeah, not the best card. <laughs> not the best card in the world. I do have one bet already looking at some other spots uh going to keep it a little bit lightish not going to have as much action as last week but um there are some 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 spots sticking out here so it should be a good car should be a fun one not the most name value in the world but looking forward to sitting back watching it making some money uh, if you guys can please leave a like subscribe to the channel as always do appreciate all the support hit me up on twitter dfs underscore numbers instagram is dfs by numbers if you have any questions comments concerns live stream friday live stream saturday look out for more content coming out throughout the week appreciate all the support guys and best of luck for ufc vegas 65 we'll talk to y'all very soon